Coming up today on That LTD Life, I'm going to be exploring Pismo. This is a Grammarly alternative that's actually a lot more because under the hood, it is powered by ChatGPT. Well, actually, GPT-40 Mini to be specific, but I think to a lot of you, that just means ChatGPT, and I'm cool with that. Now, this is not your grandparents' Grammarly, and I don't know about you, but when I think about Grammarly using it five, 10 years ago, the fans on my laptop would spin up, it would get super hot, and everything would slow down. Well, this is all offloaded to the cloud. It works super fast, and best of all, this is a desktop application. It is not a Chrome browser, so that means you can bring it into Slack, you can bring it into your email, your favorite word processor, anything you like. It runs on both Windows as well as Mac. I'm Dave Swift, by the way, I'm from clientamp.com. I review a new lifetime deal every single day of the week. This is not a sponsored video. I'm gonna be telling you exactly what I think of Pismo. If you like this video, you can click the link in the description. That's my AppSumo link, so anything you buy over there will help keep the lights on over here at the channel. You can see it's not going so well. In all seriousness, thank you to everybody who's been clicking on my AppSumo link. It really means a lot. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna jump over to the pricing page on AppSumo. There's not a whole lot to say here. And then I've already got Pismo installed on my Mac, so we can dive right in. So two different plans on Pismo, tier one, tier two, pretty big price difference. $29 is tier one. This is a sale price, by the way. It's gonna be going up on September 23rd. How much? Probably 10, 20 bucks more. I'm not exactly sure there, just my best guess. But if you can afford it, I highly recommend considering tier two, which is a hundred bucks. But here you're gonna get unlimited usage. Back on tier one, we only get 2000 requests per month. So the better deal long-term is obviously going to be unlimited usage. Keep in mind that this is a one-time fee. It's not a monthly subscription. So it's a one-time upfront cost that you'll benefit from for a long time to come. All right, so let me show you how to use this tool. This is a word processor that I like to use on the Mac. It's called Ulysses. It's in Setup. You can get it if you want. But really, like I said, you can use this inside of any tool that you like. Now with Ulysses, I can use Markdown, which is one of the reasons I really like it. You'll see all these kind of funny symbols here. Basically, that just means whether it's a heading or things like that. Okay, so I've got the copy from the deal page over here. Let's pretend like I was the copywriter working on this sales page. And maybe I just wanted to fix things up a little bit, improve it for clarity. Well, what I could do is simply select a sentence. So right here, this sentence, I feel like is maybe just a little bit unclear about what it's trying to say. It says, between Slack messages, blog posts, and email outreach, your workflow isn't exactly flowing when you're still stuck on the first draft. Okay, so that's not bad, but I feel like it's a little bit unclear. What it's trying to say is that Slack messages, blog posts, and email outreach are distractions and they're keeping you from getting past your first draft. So I could try to rewrite that on my own, or I could invoke Pismo. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I could click up here in the menu bar, but I think the more powerful way to do it and kind of what I became accustomed to almost immediately was simply to press Shift Command C with some text selected, and then it automatically copies that selected text into Pismo, and I can go ahead and write any prompt that I like. You can see there's a little prompt screen right here. Down below, I also have some presets. Now I can customize these. I can even add my own presets, my preset prompts. So if there's tasks that you like to use often, like fight my foes on Twitter, you can create a prompt for that, hit a single button and be good to go. I can imagine as a Stream Deck user, utilizing the ability to add a custom key command for individual prompts, I could make page after page of different custom prompts and generate content in every scenario with just a couple taps of my fingers. It's actually kind of mind boggling to think about. Anyway, back to our original task here. I wanna take this message and I wanna just make it better. So I could try out some of these prompts that are included like improve writing. And here is the output. It says between Slack messages, blog posts, and email outreach, your workflow isn't exactly smooth when you're still stuck on the first draft. So in this case, it just kind of replaced exactly flowing with exactly smooth. Not ex really what I was going for, not exactly what I was going for. Uh, so what I can do at this point is I can regenerate, just do the same prompt again. I could continue with another prompt. I could try another prompt. So continue versus try. If I continue, it's gonna keep the existing result and then continue to approve upon it. But if I try another prompt, it's gonna go back to that original text. And I think what I'm gonna do here is just write my own prompt and I'll just use plain English to explain what I want. 
All right, so I just wrote a simple prompt here that says, this line is supposed to communicate that things are getting in the way of completing your first draft, but I don't think it's clear. So rewrite it, keep it witty, but improve the clarity. All right, so I'm just gonna click the little uh, paper airplane icon over here. It sends it off to the AI and it says, with Slack messages pinging, blog posts demanding attention and emails piling up, it's hard to keep your creative river flowing when you're still stuck in the swamp of your first draft. That's really good in my opinion. I think that is definitely better than what was there originally. So how do I utilize this inside of my document? I've got the option right here to replace the selection. If I click this, it's going to delete what is already selected and then replace it with what the AI generated. I also have the option to just copy it to my clipboard. So you might wanna do that if you're you know, moving it around the web. For now, I'm just going to replace the selection. Oh, before I click that, there's also the option to insert it below. That way you can kind of have both options there. So let's go ahead and replace the selection and then boom, there you go. My document has already been improved. All right, so let's try another example. Let's say I'm AppSumo and I've decided I wanna make a dedicated sales page for another language, let's say French. So I can select some text right here and then I'll invoke Pismo again, shift command C, that brings open my interface. It's got the text already selected. And then one of the default options is to translate to French. So I could press just shift command F and that would work, but since I'm already here, I will just click it and it's translating into French and I'll insert this one below. Now I've got my English version here as well as my French version down below. So that's Pismo in a word processor. Let's try using it in an email client. Here is Apple Mail. I just got this message from vidIQ. I've hit 1.9 million views. That's awesome. I wanna write back to them and tell them thank you for notifying me of this. I'm gonna hit the reply button. I'll select the text, shift command C, and I'll say reply to Rob Wilson who wrote this message to me about my YouTube. And then I'll just go ahead and have it generate. And then it says, hi Rob, thank you so much for these kind words. I really appreciate your support as I reach this milestone. It's been a fantastic journey and I'm excited to keep creating content for everyone to enjoy. All right, so obviously this is a fake scenario, but you get the idea of how quickly you could respond to email messages that normally you would probably put off and then try to blast through on a Friday night uh, just to get caught up with those emails. Well, now you can do it right away thanks to the power of AI. Of course, just because Pismo is a desktop application does not mean you can't use it in a browser. I've got Safari open here. I'm on Twitter. Let's say I wanted to respond to Jordy here. I'll just simply select his tweet and then I'm gonna press Shift Command C. It copies his tweet into Pismo and I'll just tell it to reply negatively. So I wasn't affected. I'll have the AI generate. And there we go, I've got a response. I haven't experienced any crashes with Mac Whistler on Sequoia. Now I probably didn't need to use AI for this type of response, but you get the point here. You can use it in literally any scenario. I'll copy to the clipboard, close this out and paste in my reply. All right, the last thing I wanna do in this video is just show you the settings screen of Pismo. To get to this screen, by the way, you simply click on the menu bar icon and then go to settings and it'll look like this. The main part we wanna focus on is the prompts tab. So we've got the standard prompts right here and these are all just fixed. Like we can't change any of them. You can see it's kind of grayed out over here. There's a bunch more that are not on by default, but we can optimize for TikTok. We can optimize for Instagram, so on and so forth. By checking them, it turns them on. So if I were to invoke the tool here, they're now showing up, optimized for TikTok, op optimized for Instagram. I can turn them off. We've got angry tone, we've got friendly tone, casual tone. There's a ton of different presets, but if you really want to create your own, you can do that down here where it says custom prompts. You could start completely from scratch, or maybe you want to start with improve from writing, which is a fairly long prompt here. I can duplicate it into my own prompt and here it is down here. And now I can edit the prompt. However, I see fit. You can add your own hotkey right down here. So just simply press shift command, whatever you'd like, and that will invoke this prompt. We can also make it a quick prompt. Now, what that means is if you click on the menu bar icon, there is apply quick prompt to selected text. So that'll allow you to just automatically run the prompt without even pulling up the interface at all. It'll just apply it right away and you'll get the outputs. All right, so there it is. That's everything that Pismo can do. It's pretty powerful. There's just a few things that I'd like to see improve. Actually, just two. So the first one is the fact that there's no team plan at all. I'd love to have multiple users and be able to share custom prompts within the team. This would be great for a business and hopefully that's something they'll consider adding in the future. The other thing that I'd love to see is 
maybe a more clear interface if I have not already copied the text. So let me show you what I mean. So back to our Twitter example here. Now I've been focused on copying the text and then pressing Shift Command C to bring up the interface and that selects the text. But there's another way to engage this tool, which is Shift Command X and that just brings it up. However, I don't see a way to give it any context as for what I'm working on at this point. It'd be great if I could then go ahead and have it, you know, inter interact with the entire page or something along those lines. Essentially right here, I can just say things like write a reply saying I'm not getting the air. They don't know what this is about, but it can go ahead and write that message. But that's really it. This is a pretty killer tool. It doesn't look too bad and it works very reliably but there is something right around the corner and that is Apple intelligence. I happen to be running the newest version of Mac OS Sequoia, but I don't have access to Apple intelligence quite yet. That is coming soon and it will duplicate a lot of these features, but I suspect it won't be quite as good as what we're seeing here. However, this is giving our data over to OpenAI, which is gonna be a deal stopper for a lot of people that just you know are worried about the privacy implications. With Apple intelligence, you've got everything on device or at least most of it on device. And if not, it goes to their secure cloud before eventually asking you if you'd like to engage with ChatGPT. So that will be a benefit and also it'll be included with your Mac. That doesn't really help Windows users at all. And this tool is available now, whereas Apple intelligence is still at least a few months away. So time for a final score here. I'm gonna give Pismo an 8.4. I think this is a really interesting tool. It's executed well and the price cannot be beat. If you have any questions about Pismo or maybe anything I got wrong in this video, make sure you hit me up with a comment down below. Consider checking out my links in the description and head over to clientamp.com to get signed up for my free email newsletter. My name is Dave. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next review.